Right, winter's well and truly here now, and uh, something I really like to do throughout the winter months is get out on the bank and catch a few roach. They're a wonderful fish to catch, and there's, there's nothing better than a great big net for at the end of the day, whether it be in a match situation or whether you're just going out fishing for fun. We're here today at Shatterford Lakes. It's owned by a good friend of mine, Grant Albert. He uh, assures me that there's plenty of fish in here, some quite big ones as well. So let's get a bit of bait in and we'll have a look at the tactics and everything else that we're going to be doing to catch them today. my swim so while the bait's settling in the swim I'm just gonna take a few minutes to run you through quickly what we're using and uh, the amounts and what we expect to happen today um, three main baits really ever faithful casters some red maggots a few worms Grant tells me, tells me there's a few bream in here as well so they might be a, worth a try later um, and pinkies which I had to my ground bait. The ground bait mix itself, very very simple, uh, basically a full bag of Bait Tech Pro Natural, straight in with that, and then half a bag of the dark roach really do seem to prefer to feed over a darkish ground bait so I'm just going to add half a bag of that to that and then that'll be plenty it's just it's just worth noting that because it's deep here the ground bait you use is worth giving a little bit of consideration basically you need something that will bind you need something that will carry loose feed to the bottom without breaking up on the way down what you can find if that does happen is you end up with a very small stamp of fish in your swim. So basically when the bait gets to the bottom intact and carries all your loose feed, you do tend to pick up a far better size of fish. Right, gonna go straight in with a pint of water with that. Lazy man's way today with a drill. Already that's gone a nice dark brown colour which will uh, match the bottom of this lake quite well. It's quite a, quite a clay sort of bottom really so basically leave that for 10 minutes or so and then probably add the same amount of water again and that will that'll be perfect. Um, what is important when you're feeding your bait though is for my initial feed I sort of will measure out an amount of bait. So that'll be one ball, two balls, three balls, four. That's what I put in on my long line, put four balls in to start with, and then I put one ball on, the, on my short line. So there's enough ground bait there to make at least five balls of ground bait. What I like to do though, to be a little bit more accurate is measure the amount of bait that I actually put into the ground bait. So there's one pot of casters there. I'll put two, two small pots of casters in to start with. They went in like that. And then I'll put one pot of pinkies. And I also put some chopped worm. The benefits of doing it like this is once I start fishing, I know exactly how much I've put in, but also it gives me a good idea where I've put too much, I've not put enough. Uh, so if I put that bait in and I catch straight away, but the fish go off the feed very quickly, chances are they might have ate the lot. So I'll need to top up again, but I know that I've put two cups of this, a cup of that. So it just gives me a good reference point for either future sessions or how to adapt my session as it goes on. Let's get over there and catch a few fish. 
The lake here at Shatterford is quite a bit different to most of the lakes that I fish in that it's very, very deep. Um, on my deepest rig today, I've probably got 15 foot of water. So obviously that requires top fours, top fives, and uh, obviously heavier floats than what you'd use normally. Let's take a look at the, the first rig, which is the deepest rig, which is about half a mile down this pole. The float is a, a two gram float, which is set up on an 013 Power Optex mainline. Uh, running down the rig, coming to an Olivet. Yeah. Now, when you're choosing an Olivet for fishing on these big heavy rigs, it's quite important to uh, give yourself a bit of an option, really. Now, the float's two grams, so I've picked a 1.75 gram Olivet which enables me to build quite a few small shots into my rig and around it I've probably got one, two, there's probably about eight number tens to take the float down and dot it down nicely. Um, but what this enables me to do, it adds a little bit of versatility into my rig so I can bulk it down a bit more, I can turn it into a double bulk style rig or anything like that. So it always pays to just think about the size of the Olivetti you're using and just make it a little bit lighter than the capacity of the float so you're, you're able to uh, put these small shots into it. Going down to the hook length which is five inches of 08 power optex and a size 18 black gamma hook, a nice fine wire barbless hook. The elastic for the deeper rig is quite important too. Um, because you've got quite a large float and obviously a lot of line to pick up, the last thing you want is a very light elastic. You need something that's forgiving so you don't lose the fish on the way in, but you need it so you can set the hook nicely um, that doesn't see you bumping a lot of fish off on, on the strike. So I've chosen the number five elastic today, which, which is set reasonably tight so it just pings back into the top kit and that's perfect. That rig is fished at 13 metres and I've also set a line up at 6 metres where I'm going to be loose feeding casters um, and obviously this is quite a bit shallow, it's probably, I've probably got 8 foot of depth there and that, that'll be fed with just a ball of ground bait and loose fed over the top. The float this time is a MAP DF3 4x18 float. Uh, this time on 012 Power Optex mainline, I come down the rig, I've got, again, I like to use smaller shots where I can, arguably I could use an Olivet with this float, but I prefer to use a bulk of number 8s and that just gives me a lot more options with regards to uh, the shotting pattern that I use throughout the day, I can bulk it down, I can spread it out and it just uh, it, it stops me having to set up loads of different rigs, basically, and just, just makes everything a bit more simple. Hook length again, five inches, 08 power optex, and again, a size 18 black gamma hook. Elastic again, number five. Um, something I would like to touch on with the rigs that I use for roach fishing. They all have quite a long line between my elastic and the float. Um, Basically, if, if you, when you're fishing like this, you're looking to catch a lot of fish. So if I was to have a short length of line, chances are when I'm shipping out at speed, uh, the float will wrap around the tip, it will it'll tangle up itself. So basically I just want to ship in and out as quick as I can. And with the longer line, it enables me to give a harder strike to get plenty of elastic out on the strike. And it also, it also ensures that my float follows my pole tip rather than it bouncing around and causing tangles. Just, just something to consider. My last rig for today is a rig that I've got for fishing at all depths really. I've, I've just set it up on the top kit here. Uh, I'll probably be looking to fish it around three to four foot deep just fishing through the water if the fish come off the bottom when I'm loose feeding casters. 
Uh, the float itself is a 4 by 12 WD3. Uh, 012 power optics again. Uh, this time I've only got seven number 10s strung out at sort of three or four inch intervals for the last two and a half foot of my rig probably. Um, and that just ensures that when I lay my rig in, I can just hold it nice and tight, let the, let the shots fall slowly, and I can catch the fish on the drop. Again, five inch hook length, size 18, uh, black gamma. Uh, just a quick word about the top kits that I'm using. The kits themselves are new to the uh, MAP range. They're uh, the original match kits. Um, and basically they're a more traditional top kit. In, up until now, our top kits have been supplied pre-bushed as basically for commercial fisheries. But now we've added these nice top kits with a, number, a long, thin number one section in, which if you cut them back about five or six inches, they, they, they'll match your cupping kit and your existing kits as well. So they really do slot in well and make light elastics work perfectly, which in the past have stuck to the side of a larger bore top kit, unless you double bushed it. Something that's quite important when you're fishing in such deep water is to uh, is how you actually put your rig in the water. The best way is to just chip out to the full length, lift the rig right out, drop the olivet in, and where the, the ring that the olivet has made, where it's dropped in where you, over your bait, lay your float over the top of that, and then that just ensures that the, oh, the rig will straighten up perfectly right right under your pole tip so you're in ready and resting for a bite straight away. There's another one. Just a quick note about the, where the pole roller's positioned today. I've got, got it set so that when I ship the pole back I have to bring my pole round to the right to uh, bring the fish in. Now this is quite important when you're using barbless hooks because you always need to uh, keep a tight line on the, to the fish. Any uh, any slack and you'll, you'll find that it, the fish falls off more often than not. So always have, have your roller set slightly offset, never directly behind you. So you st strike into a fish, start shipping back and all the time bringing, bringing you pole round to the left or right depending on what way you hold your pole. It's just a nice little tip that uh, has definitely seen me catch a few more fish in my time. After a couple of hours, it went a little bit quiet, so I've refed that of a couple of balls of ground bait and uh, dropped in on this short line. Immediately, I'm getting quite a lot, quite a few bites, but I'm missing a few as well. So I think, I think the fish might have come off the bottom a little bit. So I think, I think what I'll do is I'll uh, have a look with the. Uh, Shallow rig in a minute. That's just a small fish. Yeah, I'll probably have a go on that now. Just have a quick look, see if we can pick up a better stamp. I'm 
just going to bait up with a single caster and uh, see what happens. Just laying the rig in sideways and just holding tight to the float so the strung out number 10 is just sink very very slowly against it as I bite straight away then so there's obviously a few fish there so I'm just going to keep constantly throwing a few car just six or eight casters over the top of it and uh, there there's a fish that's a big fish as well Here we Really pulling. Probably a hybrid. I've had a few hybrids today, up to sort of a pound and a half, so could be one of those. They give you a good scrap. It's also a pretty good time to uh, show you that it's worth having, even with very light elastics, puller bungs set into your light match kits. Just not only for when you hook a better fish like this one, but when you're catching lots of lots of ropes, you can use a lighter elastic, pull it, and swing more fish to hand. So can really, really be an advantage in a match situation where you want to catch a little bit quicker. What have we got? A big hybrid. Oh, there he is. There you go. Nice hybrid. Well on the way to two pound that probably is. I think that shallow line's probably worth another go after that. Again, just six or eight casters. Nice and tight. Get most of the bites as, as the float reaches its reaches its full depth. There you go, there's another one. Certainly is uh, a much better stamp of fish on this. what you're after. Well there we have it, the result of our day here at Shatterford Lakes. It's been an absolutely fantastic day's fishing, probably one of the best I've ever had fishing for roach. Uh, it's not just roach we've caught today, we've caught plenty of nice good quality hybrids, we've had a couple of bream and Loads and loads of ropes like that. Absolutely stunning fish. It's got to be 40 pound plus, I'd imagine. Uh, started off long, fishing over those balls of ground bait. Caught a few fish, but fish were a little bit up and down in the deep water, so it made it a little bit difficult. So by topping up the ground bait, we managed to pin a few down and catch a few like that, and then after a couple of hours we come short on the shorter line we've been loose feeding the casters uh, and we've caught really well there uh, so on the deck initially and then i've come shallow and it's been literally a rope like that every single cast so absolutely fantastic day big thanks to grant for letting us come here and uh yeah i'll definitely be back